One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Faster, Mr. Shankle. One, two, three, four. One, two. Slower, Mr. Shankle. One, two, three, four. What? Faster, Mr. Shankle. One, two, three, four. One, two. Slower, Mr. Shankle. One, two, three, four. Very good. One, two, Very good. Three, four. Be careful of the car. Trust me. Traffic this time of the morning in Chicago can be pretty heavy. So? What is it? I think I'm thinking again. Check your legs a little, Mr. Shankle. <laughs> Have a fun day, chum. How can I miss? Oh! Oh, I got water in your eyes. Those are tears, Mrs. Shanko. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Charlie, start a riot? He's the one who's starting. So lay off the horn. Have a heart for our eardrums. Hey, do me a favor. Have your riot in somebody else's alley, huh? All right, come on. I'll guide you out. Oh, I got to see this shipping clerk over here. I'm supposed to start working. I'm a shipping clerk. Well, you must be the new stock man, mister. I'm hired yesterday. Well, I park it in here. There'll be room today. I'll make it six minutes up. Just about. Well, is it or isn't it? Uh, well, I get four minutes to seven, but I never keep my watch exact. I mean, to the second. Well, I'm sure my watch is right. I checked it an hour ago by the radio. Well, then I'm sure it's okay. Between Charlie and me, you're going to start wondering what you stumbled into. Filling orders all night. And the machinery going. And the phone ringing every two seconds, and the hammering on the crates, the screaming at each other. Well, the pay is good. But to tell you the truth, when morning comes around sometimes, you don't know whether it's springtime or Tuesday. Sounds like I should start running. No, no. This is the 
best job in the city. Sorry, you got a good job. The whole fifth floor. There's nobody but you. Us jokers are all home, snoring the day away. When you finish filling the bends with fresh stock, the world is yours. You can dance, sing, stand on your head, pretend you're Fred Astaire or Charlie Chaplin. I used to like working all day by myself. I started in your job. See? You too can be a big success. And you gotta be careful with these. Easy does it. You'll get to learn all the tricks after a while. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be here that long. Don't be such a pessimist. I'm an optimist. I just don't think it'll be permanent. A little bankroll and I'm on my way. On your way? Right. I got this buddy and he's got a pink slip to that car downstairs. And we got a tank full of gas and a rotten sense of direction. Just like that? Why not? It's a big country. Yeah, but... Uh-uh. Yeah, but. When you say yeah, but, that yeah becomes no. Yeah, that's right. It must be wonderful to live like that. everybody. Can't be seven o'clock yet. Where are they? Sam! Oh, where are you? It's still five minutes to quitting time. Jack, that's not right. I just came down from Mr. M's office. Wow. What do you mean, wow? The roof's fallen in. Somebody filed up on the order from Smith Sundries. Mr. M wants to see you pronto. That order went out all right. I'm just telling you what he said. He wants to see you now. Now? I can't just now. Sam. He was sore? I've seen him happier, Sam. There was nothing wrong with that order. This is a new start, man. Show him around, will you, Jack? Martinson speaker, you don't fasten those wire the usual way. Cross it over and uh, ground the white one. Another country heard from. You know about them? Yeah, I had a speaker like that in a high five set. Get off now, let this guy fix it. Come on. Well, what's it for? Come on, Come on, fix it. Come on, fix it. Is somebody going to tell me what's going on? It's just a little gag, that's all. Come on, man. All right, all right. All I need is a second and a quarter. That's just about all you got. Well, I'm sure starting off on the right foot. say he wanted you if he didn't. I can't understand that, man. Look at the time. It's five after seven. We'll see you tonight, Sam. Isn't it great? After all these months? Yes. Get away from well, me. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Lola and Emma. Betsy. 
I said something wrong, Sam. I don't mean that. This is what you heard, Mr. Frazier. They had your phone bugged. But you get this cocoa. And I helped them. Hey, take it easy. The guy said I could get a refund. Just leave him alone, huh? You also like to give orders, huh? Uh -huh. they do it? Why'd you do it, Roy? Are you happy or not? Happy? I'm sick. Sam. Whoever figured it was going to end up like this? We saw you on the phone. Every morning at the same time. A couple of weeks ago, I I passed by and I heard you sound like, you know, such a big-time lover. 
It bugged us. Wondering what the score was, you know? Most of the... A joke, Sam. Just a joke? I promised myself when I was a kid, before I died, I'd experience everything. You're scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't you? What's left, cholera? If you're not careful, I'll cross you off my next to kin list. Who'd take my place? heavyweight champion of the world. You're gonna have a headache for a month. Is uh, Sam Fraser okay? You take a guess, I'll take a guess. We still won't know. He telephoned about an hour ago. Hello and goodbye. Before I could tell him, look, Sam, don't be a dope. He hung up on me. Gently. 
poor guy. You ask me, it's a little late in spring for poor guy. You're the one who hooked up the speaker, ain't you? Yeah, but I didn't know what was going on. What kind of joke is it to tear a man's heart out? Maybe my sense of humor ain't what it used to be. Nothing's what it used to be. Look at that egg beater. The eggs will beat it. By the way, you're fired. Let's go. Goodbye, Mr. Practical Joker. Look, he said he didn't know what was going on. He's got a mouth. He could ask questions. You know how long Sam has worked for me? I didn't even know myself. I had to look it up. Nineteen years. Longer than anyone else. Twelve thousand items I carry in my stock. And he knew where everything was from oxygen tents to shoe polish. Look, where does he live? I'd like to know if he's okay. I was going to mail him his last check. He wouldn't even come in for that. You tell him I want him back. Tell him not to be ashamed. Just realize now, after 19 years, I don't know nothing about him, except maybe his social security number. <laughs> you want to hear something? I should have asked a couple of questions myself. With not so much as a goodbye or good luck, Mrs. Crayley. After 12 years now, if he felt misused in any way, should he not have told me? Well, do you have any idea of where he went? He left while I was marketing. Wouldn't you know this would be just the day that I bought a lovely leg of veal that he favors so? Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Good day. Now what? Yes? I'm here to take a phone out. Name of S. Frazier. Come in, please. I've got to get back to the swimming pool. Go. She told you she doesn't know where he is. When do you quit? It can't be Gil anymore. What do you owe this guy? Why don't you go back and tell a lady to kick her legs? I mean it. Tell me. Tell you what? Why are you knocking yourself out? What's the connection? I don't know. I don't really dig it myself. Every one of us is born into solitary confinement. We spend the rest of our lives sending out an SOS. We hope to heaven somebody else will hear. So? This little fat guy is coming in clear as a bell. Done. Why did Sam take his things with him? This is service disconnecting Monroe 62598. Monroe 62598? Yeah, why? That's the number he used to call the girl. 62598, I heard it twice. And why would he have a, a phone here when there's one that's so easy to get to in the hall? Listen, would, would you hold that up a minute? Sure. That's all the dust after 12 years. Somehow that strikes me sad. A dime. When the phone rings, don't answer. Yeah, okay. Who does he expect to answer the phone if we don't? No, no, this isn't Sam. Uh, I'm looking for Sam. Uh, who, who's this? Who can answer that phone except from here? Telephone answering service.
I'm looking for a Mrs. Crayley. I'm Mrs. Crayley. This is for you. It's his handwriting. I forgot to leave money enough for the last phone bill, plus any odds and ends I might have overlooked. Please give my bowling ball to Mr. Griffin down the street. We both have fat fingers, and the ball should suit him perfectly. Hey! Hey, wait! Where did you see the guy who gave you that letter? It's the fair. He paid an extra buck for me to come out and bring the letter. I asked him, I said, why don't you just put a four-cent stamp on it? But if he wants to spend money like there's no tomorrow, who am I to argue? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but where did you leave him? Said he was leaving town. Wanted to say goodbye to the city from up high, the Tribune Tower. And I asked you that first. Jack really banged you up, didn't he? Did they catch him yet? I don't know. That's the friend I was telling you about. Does he know about it, too? Where's the plane fly over and spell it all out in smoke? Still no reason for being up here. Well, why do I have to have a reason? The letter to your landlady. It sounded like your last will and testament. What were you doing over there? Last will. You thought I came up here to jump? What makes you think I'm so brave? Now I come up here lots of times. It's a swell view of the city. It's a good place to see Alveda's name, like they say. Last will and testament. <laughs> it's just the opposite. When Mrs. Crayley goes out for a bingo game, I'm going to pick up my suitcases. And then I'm going to be like you guys, traveling, having a ball. <laughs> Don't make me sound like a kook or something. I'm the same as everybody else. I can drink beer to the barrels empty. Nobody laughs louder than me at a good joke. There's a couple of women in the back drop by. They don't slam the door in my face. <laughs> on a phone. What is it? Nothing. What about all that line of bull life that Brian Ahern and all that baloney? I was more myself with her those few minutes every morning than I've ever been with anybody all my life. You wouldn't think that would be so important, would you? Sam, why do you have to leave Chicago? Why not? What have I got here that's so great? Yeah, but to start from scratch in a new place. You guys do it. But we do it with exultation, with hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Sam, Mr. M thinks the world of you. Why do you have to find a new job and a new life? Supposing we could fix everything with Ruthie so that it was just the way it was before. I'm not leaving because of a voice on the phone. It's the whole idea. What happened today? Everything. I'm sick of this place! How could you square it? Must be a hundred ways. 
Why don't you give me a little time to think, huh? <laughs> now, Stiles, don't force me to take this up with Mr. Pavis. Tell Mrs. Shankle anybody can teach her how to swim. She has a natural grace. Well, what can I do? My buddy's still in surgery. I can't leave till I know whether or not he's going to live or die. Uh, no! No, no uh, don't put Mrs. Shankle on. I had a toothache. Call a dentist. It was Wednesday, his day off. It was exchange at you. The voice on the other end was so wonderful. So soft and gentle. It's my train. Well, I haven't thought of anything yet. I know. Yeah, but why don't you take another train? What difference does it make? Later. I'll take this one. Yeah. It's such a crummy place to go to. On the way, the train stops in New Orleans. Maybe I'll stop off there for a while. New Orleans? Oh, of course, that's one of the great towns on Earth. New Orleans has no other love, starring Ivor Novello and Helen Twelve Trees. The live story is Petre Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Did I say that right, Professor? Oh. So, it's winning town, huh? Well, yeah. A New Orleans chick dressed in spangled pants, Toreador, that is, invites you up to a pad to see the Late Late Show. You figure this has got to be some kind of strange words because this is New Orleans, right? with Bessie Smith and King Oliver and, and all those that kind of jazz. This has got to be the place, right? Except she really meant the Late Late Show? Give the professor the phosphorescent bow tie. Yes, indeed, that chick with the spangled pants from New Orleans, she is hooked on English movies. I'll bet you I'm the greatest living authority on that motion picture, no other love. What do you want? Cast credits? Theme music? Commercials. Miss Twelve Trees Gowns? Lorraine. Sound technician, J.P. Alder. Music composed by Vladimir Bracht, played by the Symphonic Symphony Orchestra of Liverpool under the direction and the baton of Sir Jonathan Wrong. Now I'll give you a thumbnail cameo of the principal part. Now we have the old music teacher who decides after two lessons that young Pietre Ilyich knows ten times as much as he does and decides after that point to call this five-year-old kid with a Buster Brown haircut maestro. But the conductor, famous but pompous, he doesn't dig, uh, won't play this cat swinging music. And uh, he, s he smokes Dutch cigars. Gotta go. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I haven't uh, done the horses yet. But uh, well, I'm very big with the horses. The pampered baroness was played to the hill by, by uh, Helen Twelty. She's got this black trotter with a white star in the middle of his head. And as he clumps through the streets of St. Petersburg with a leg flying. Goodbye. Thank you. Put it down. Why? You're not taking that train. I am, Buzz. Tchaikovsky's the answer. His romance with the, with the Baroness what's her name, don't you think? Afraid not. Give me the bow tie back, Professor. In a 40-year courtship, he only saw this chick once. They passed each other in their carriages, nodded, and lived happily ever after. I gotta be going. Chicks dig things like this. The Baroness, what's her name, and Tchaikovsky, Sam and Ruthie. Oh, I see. It's a joke. Why does it have to be a joke? And when she sees me, she sees him. Oh, Buzz, you better go buy some more popcorn. It's insane. Crazy, there's a difference. What have you got to lose? Wouldn't work. But it worked for Tchaikovsky. <laughs> I told you, girls like things like this.
thank you, Reese. But I still don't think Brian Ahern has anything to worry about. You're beautiful. You're more beautiful than I ever imagined. Yeah, yes, it, it was sort of silly. But how else would you really believe I hadn't been fooling you all this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Lucy. I'll call you tomorrow. I guess this makes us the Cupid brothers. Stupid brothers. What's with you? Nothing. Now Sam will get a new phone and he'll go back to being the Don Juan of AT&T. I love stories with happy endings. like a new man, no kidding. Rosie was really pleased with my appearance. I mean, your appearance. How do you thank somebody for, well, for following the way they look? Forget it. Everybody's been shouting a lifeguard, especially that Mrs. Uh, Shanko. Where you been? Driving around. Chicago's a big town. I stopped for gas. I picked up a bunch of maps. Uh, on a gas station said, Wisconsin's great this time of year. We just got here. Yeah, I'd still like to see Wisconsin. What's with you? Your Tchaikovsky and the Baroness bit stinks. That's what's with me. You don't seem to realize what a really sick thing this is. While you were worrying about Sam, did you think about the girl? Did you see her? I mean, really see her. She's young and vital. And trapped by a stupid lie in an empty relationship. She doesn't have to be trapped. Well, then. A gas station says you haven't lived unless you've seen Wisconsin. I want to see her again. How can I feel like that? I only saw her for... 30 seconds. Feel like what? So I've been moving toward her my whole life without even knowing it. She's... She's like something out of a dream I can't even remember having. Uh, what about Sam? He'd get the same kick out of a long playing record. What does he know about her? What do you know about her? You talk about Sam? At least he's been speaking to her on the phone for I don't know how long. You got a fast 30 seconds of just seeing her? Don't ask me to make logic out of it. But you insist on logic from Sam, right? Okay, drop it. You were saying how sick he is. Sam and his illusion. You're hung up the same way he is, man. It's different. Why? Because it happened to you? Okay. Let's see if that gas station attendant really knew what he was talking about. I want to see her again. Where does she work? Ask Sam where she is. No.
doesn't look like much of a place for a cup of coffee, fellas. You don't recognize it? Why should I? You mail them $10.70 the first of every month. Ruthie works up there. What kind of a joke is that? The telequick answering service, one flight up. You're crazy. You're both crazy. Let me alone. Come with us for a cup of coffee before we hit the road. Instead, you bring me here. What am I, some oxen? Everybody plays jokes? Come on. Now you let me alone or I'll kiss you. Sam, Ruthie's up there waiting for you. You told her about me. I did. But what you waiting for? For the clown to show up with his baggy pants and his nose and lights up? Sam. You Sam, do you think we brought you here just to shame you? I thought you were the last guy in the world who pulled something like that. I wish I could die. <laughs> you're already dead. Except for those few moments in the morning on the phone, you're as dead as a doornail. Sam, why would we want to hurt you? Why? Laugh herself so sick at me. Try her and see. You saw her. What would a girl like that mom with a clown like? Who says you're a clown? Well, I wouldn't know what to say to her. You talked to her for a year and a half on the phone. I seen her a line of bow for a year and a half. She told me sometimes you'd take a half an hour to tell her how a street looked at five o'clock in the morning, empty, waiting for something with a heartbeat to come along and give it life. What about how you saw? A blind man sitting in a broken chair, turning his face toward where he thought the sun might be. Or a child standing silent and alone, as if the joy and fury of being a child had left him for a moment. And the solemnity of being a human being had caught him unawares. Or the face of an old woman on the subway. His beauty was greater now at 80 than it ever could have been at 19. And who knew it? Both pride and regret. Not me with my phony carnation, Sam, and not Brian Ahern. That man on the phone, that's the man she fell in love with. How could she be in love with me? Sam, when somebody offers you love, you don't start examining it like a herring in a fish store. Go on upstairs to Ruthie. I say to her? Sam, when I helped those bums with the speaker, I inherited you. But I can't climb those stairs for you.
I guess I did the same thing you did, Sam. Aren't you going to wait? Nope. We'll never know if it worked out. True. The other one's name was Mrs. Uh, Susan Wood? Three kids and supremely happy. Well, can't win them all. I have a feeling you're about to be profound. It's entirely possible. <laughs> 